Yeah, Coach, uh, what are some of the um, you know things after film review um, that, that stood out as you get ready for Tampa Bay here this week? Well, like every week, um, obviously when you, when you lose, it, and in my mindset is when you win, there's always things you got to correct. And uh, clearly there's a lot of things we got to cor correct. It's not all gloom and doom. Obviously we're not happy with the result. That's life in the NFL. It's what you sign up for. And the way the thing, it's the truth, this thing's a marathon. So like I said, the best analogy I've got, and I'm a big fan of sports. I'm a very terrible golfer, but I like golf. Kind of what I explained to the guys, when you look at an NFL season, it's like playing a major championship. So you get on hole one, you hit it down the fairway to start it, and then obviously we uh, hit it over into a bunker and bogeyed our way out of there. You know, you got 71 holes, and that's why I appreciate about those golfers. I don't claim to be one, but I got a lot of appreciation about it because it's, mental, it's mentally and physically taxing in an NFL season. And your mindset's got to be, yeah, we didn't like what happened on hole one. We got 71, just like those guys come out of the first round of those major. It's a, it's a physical and mental grind, and that's what the NFL is. Different sport, but that's got to be our mentality. Where are you at with uh, left guard? You said it, all things were on the table. Sure. You'll see some, um, you know, we brought some guys in here on the practice squad. I, I don't want to steal Bassey's thunder. I'm sure he'll release it shortly. He's probably cringing right now because I gave that to you guys. So we can get that out on social media. But we'll continue to, to, to look for options, and we'll continue to improve at D-Led. Again, some of these guys are rookies. Um, and so, we don't, like I said, there's a fine line between jerking the wheel and give somebody a chance to improve and then understand that we've we got to fix issues if it doesn't change. So uh, there's no secret there. But, again, some of these rookies, in my experience, mm -hmm. like you go there, your first NFL start, and you're going against a, a, a pretty good front and some pretty good players. Let's see if we can go in there and correct it. But we also have options, too, if that's not working. Are you coaching them up? As, uh, yeah, it's, my, it's part of my job. So that's what we get paid to do. Michael? Yeah, uh, before I ask my actual questions, how bad of a golfer are you? Play like once a year. I'm probably a better. <laughs> I'd be better in a scramble. Um, I guess I'm good to ride around the car, cart and drink a couple beers. Okay. Just, just checking. So we're yeah. on the same level. Uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> we're good. Uh, after Sunday, did you hear from guys in the profession, mentors, yeah. whatever, how everything went? Like, what did they tell you? What did what was their advice to you? What did they say? I talk to people all the time. But look, Michael, I, you don't get in this thing. And like I said, when, if you're a soft soul and you come in here and you look at everything and it's catastrophic, it's not the result we wanted, right? So, but this, the analogy is you got to understand the business you stepped into. And I tell the team all the time, none of us are victims. It's professional football. And it's a long season. And we, we got to improve, uh, starting with me, and understand it's a long journey. And, you know, you guys have been around this game for a long time. You've seen the tail. Every time I've been part of, again, I've been a part of opening days two years in a row where you win big and you think you, you, you've accomplished something and we won one game the rest of that year. And, and then the next year, I think we won two more games. So I've seen both sides of it. I've seen it where you start two and four and you go on a run to the AFC Championship. I've seen it where you go six and two, you finish eight and eight. I mean, there's millions of analogies. That's kind of why I use the analogy about golf and the major championships because that's what an NFL season is. It doesn't stay the same. And so you lose it, yeah, you feel, you feel bad. I mean, everybody in this profession. But, but you understand what you signed up for and part of your job. And, and if you, are you a front runner? No. So we got to correct things. Nobody's a victim here. And we got to improve. And so that's kind of how I look at it. But there's people I talk to, but I don't, I don't need consultation. Like, I like, oh, console me. Like, get the hell out of here. Like, this is big boy. This is professional football. And I got a job to do, and this is what I signed up for. And the players, same thing. It's how we look at it. No soft souls here, Mike. I didn't mean. I didn't mean. That. No, but I was saying the way that phrase is. But, but sadly, sadly, I, I, I do get uh, bothered by people. All of a sudden, they step into this and they act like they're some kind of victim. Like you're, you're well compensated, players and coaches. We got a job to do, and and that's the fun of it. That's the challenge. And that's what you want. But to think otherwise, uh, to me, you got the wrong mindset. And when you look at what Tampa Bay's offense brought back and what they're able to do, what is it that maybe they do the best? Because we see kind of so much of Well, I think the best thing, they got good players, man. They got good staff. Obviously, Bruce Arians, those guys do a hell of a job. And, and they got good players, too. Uh, they got veterans, obviously, as well noted. They got all uh, 22 starters. I mean, I know that, you know, there's injuries every week. But that's a very good veteran team. They've won. Uh, you know, they won, I believe, nine in a row, including last year. Uh, that's a team, you know, it's it, you're talking about the tale of two seasons. I mean, you look at them last year. And they, they drew a line in the sand, and they continued to improve, and everybody saw what they did. 
and, and it's everybody. But the one thing I do know about Tom Brady is history is going to say he's probably the best or, or one of the best I've ever seen with situational football. You make mistakes, he's going to expose you. You make errors, substitution, he's going to expose you. And uh, that's why, to me, one of the many reasons that makes Tom Brady who he is. He plays the situations just as good or better than anybody I, I've seen. So uh, we, we know it's a challenge, and there's a reason why they won the Super Bowl. Josh, I know you wish that your offense had helped your defense out more, but when your defense was out there, what did you think about the way they played? Well, I mean, I think, look, when it's going to be hard to win football games when, like I said, like, like the reason I use the golf analogy, you play a lot of plays with no return on your investment. So as I got the analogy, you hit the first shot down the fairway, but it didn't mean anything because we hit it into the, into the bunker and couldn't get out of the sand. And so um, I think when you look at it, you've got to score more than six points. So however it happens, we've got to find a way to score points. And it, it's a team game. It's all three phases. Like I said, you can look at things. Okay, is our process good? Is our progress in certain areas? Sure. There's a lot of things we got to correct, and it's the same way on defense and special teams. There's things we got to we got to clean up on teams, clean up clean on defense, and you can show to look at two ways. There's things that get you beat, which are pretty obvious that we went through on Monday. There's things that you're making progress on. Let's build off those lessons learned, and let's move on. So really, in all three phases, uh, and that's not me trying to rationalize or, or make excuses. It's just a matter of fact, and uh, we got to keep building. We got to improve. Corey. Yes, I think we have spoken a lot of using the terms growing pains and constantly evolving from one week to the next, but I'm, I'm just curious, what are examples for you of acceptable growing pains and unacceptable growing pains? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, technique, fundamental issues, to me those are acceptable. The unacceptable ones or, you know, the pre-snap, just you can't get the play started. You can't get out of your own way. And that's the things we got to cut out. That's the stuff that keeps me up at night. You get out there and, and, and you, because that, that's what looks like amateur performance to me. So the ones that are, are in aggression, that you're talking about, D Light asked me about coaching and our job and the, and the players all working together. Yeah, those technique, excuse me, technique and fundamental issues, you work through those, especially with the young guys. But the missed assignments or the pre snap stuff, that's the stuff that keeps you up at night and you got to make decisions. I'm always going to give guys, you know, you got to have people a chance to correct themselves, but if somebody's a repeat offender on that, then you got to make decisions. Charles, I'll try to extend your golf analogy a little bit. And while you're looking <laughs> at some of the clubs in your bag, the guy on the other side of the line has all 22 back. Uh, what kind of a luxury is that for, for a coach? As well, a coordinator, how rare is it to even have 11 back? Well, those, those guys are, are smart enough. Like each season takes on a life of its own. And I think you've, you've probably, again, heard. Bruce say that many times, and he knows that the guy's a hell of a football coach, been coaching a long time, excuse my language, but he has. And he knows, and they know every season is its own entity. And so I, I don't know to, to, in their mindset, but I know as a football coach, they know every season is different. Certainly there's experience, those guys, but you got to earn it every, every week, every day. And they're a good example of that and what they did last year and what they continue to do and what they did uh, Thursday night against Dallas. Those guys have been in tough situations. They got a good belief system, and they went out there and they executed and, and they made plays in the in pressure. And that's what those guys. That's what true pros do. Allison, what challenges does it present facing a division opponent this early in the season? There's a challenge every week. Um, obviously, the division games, because of, you know when you get into it in the long haul, someone's phone's going off here. Um, when you get into a long haul, obviously when you get down there and, and you're hopefully playing get into the tournament at the end of the year, yeah, you the division records, I mean, it uses tiebreakers. You've got you to do a nice job in your division. So every game is big in the NFL, certainly the divisional opponents, because you're going to play those guys twice. Uh, but I look at it as a challenge every week. And, and Tampa is a, is a great challenge for us. Anthony? Um, Coach, you mentioned Bruce Arias and his coaching style. Just going to this game, especially for your defense looking to improve, you know, he's very aggressive when it comes to fourth down situations. Like he usually likes to go for in fourth and short or fourth and medium situations. How have you been coaching your defense just to be ready for that opportunity so they can get up? He play every snap. I mean, I think the one thing, if you're looking for some positives, we did that on Sunday. Uh, that's not new. I mean, the thing that happens is, is kind of everybody, you see these waves. You saw it happen in baseball. You see it happen in football. 
you know, you want to call it analytical waves. Everybody's pretty much got the same data now. Same thing that happened in baseball. Billy Bean writes that book. Everybody hires the same kind of guys. They all, and eventually, you know, it's like, what's, what's your, what's uh, different, it differentiates you from the rest. So you're seeing more people going fourth down, right? And then ultimately, you've got to make a decision for your team whether it's the right call or not, whether they get points. You get down there, and those are decisions. That's what they pay you to make. You're fourth and three on there. Do you go for it, or do you go ahead and first drive and kick, get points? Those are decisions you got to make as a coach. You get in there a second drive, it's fourth and one. We thought we should go for it. We're kind of in that fringe area, and we went for it. And luckily, Matt and Kyle made a play, and they, and they, and they made it right. So, um, And you go into preseason, you know, certainly people play with house money in the preseason. They go for it more. Uh, certainly Philly did. One of probably every team now that uses the analytical data, and they went for it a couple times, right, on fourth down. And our defense knows that. I think everybody in the league knows that. They're ready to play until they see the kickers come out there. Their mindset's got to be we got to stop four downs, especially when you get in the plus territory. It's not late in the game. Jarvis. Coach, what are some of the things that like, stand out to you when you go through the film of uh, Todd Bowles' coach defense? Like, Why yeah. has he been so successful in, in the NFL? Well, uh, I don't know Todd. Uh, personally, other than, you know, brief interactions. Uh, and I got all the respect in the world for Todd. And a few times, I just look in the last 10 years, um, you know, played him when he was in Arizona. It's a challenge. Certainly, he had some good defenses in, in New York with the Jets and what he's done down. And we played him two years ago when he was in, uh, I believe, their first year in Tampa. He's very creative, uh, aggressive, and they, they do a lot of good things. It's the subtle things that you see on film. That, that I got a lot of respect for, you know, how, and, and again, not to give everything away, but that's where I got a ton of respect for him. It's not that, you know, it's he's just aggressive. There's, you can see the whys, or at least, you know, you have deductive reasoning why you see it and you see what they're doing. And you say, hey, that's pretty good. It's pretty smart how he's attacking protections or how he's trying to play certain looks and motions and formations. And that's why I give him a lot of credit. And uh, really smart, a lot, of, a lot of personnel packages they'll throw it at you and a lot of different blitz. Uh, packages that some of them look the same and they have different patterns and to me it's a he's one of the best there is. Do you see any similarities from Philadelphia's defense and uh, no. Tampa? Uh, very different. Very different. Maria? When you went back and looked at the film specifically the red zone offense what are you looking to clean up in that area and make sure that those are touchdowns not field goals? Sure uh, that's a challenge I mean I think everybody asks themselves that when you don't score down there and uh, you go through there and, you know, all right, first thing you look at schematically, was it sound? Okay. If it was, okay, what happened? Was there an issue here? Uh, you know, we lose somewhere one on one protection, uh, matchup out there. Where do we have certain personnel? I think it all comes into play and in what you go into a game trying to accomplish. And then obviously they have a say and there's a counter punch. And do you have answers? I uh, feel pretty confident with why we didn't do it that we can get cleaned up and. and and then getting the good challenges, we'll have to go out there Sunday and the rest of the season to prove it. So we're not continually kicking field goals down there. Michael? Yeah, I want to go back to kind of what I was asking before about like, not necessarily advice, but when you look at week one, the things that you sit there after you, your, your debut and how it goes and say, man, I need to change this, or do you kind of stick with, you're like, you know what, this is what got me here, so I need to stay. Well, you know, on the surface, like you're sitting there saying, you know, like you got beliefs, and there's things that we're talking about, you know, and people use that buzzword of process, right? That's it's become like a corporate buzzword. Uh, you know, who started first? I don't know if it was Alabama or not, right? Everybody hung on to that. But to have a real process in your, in your culture, it's like there's things you have beliefs at your foundation, and you're constantly looking to evolve. To me, if you don't evolve, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be an issue at some point. Uh, but that's not really what I felt going into that. And that's not me being arrogant or stubborn because th it's fair. All criticism is fair, and you got to look at it, and I think it's healthy. And then you're going into it saying, all right, is our process messed up? Certainly you start there. And, and that's what I think it's, it's fair. I don't feel that way. Certainly, you know, you play out the next couple of weeks. If something's got to change, if you're not getting any kind of improvement, if there's not progress being made. Uh, but I'm not going to all of a sudden change who I am personality-wise because to me it goes back to that mentality like, Try to be as neutral as I can. Try to be as objective when or, whether we win or lose because it is that grind of a season. And so you look back at Sunday, and there's things you, we can certainly build on, and there's a lot of things we got to get cleaned up. And you look at the foundation, and I feel like our foundation is there. And it certainly wasn't good enough. 
And uh, but that's why they, that's why it's part of my job so to make sure I get that stuff cleaned up. A message you like really focus in on your players, saying, "Listen, like I know last week went the way it went, but I'm sticking to X and I'm sticking to Y. Like, is that important to kind of have?" That I, I mean, look, I don't think you're at the point where you, you know, like that's it goes back to that. I, I joke, say, soft souls. Like, if you're that insecure, you're part of being insecure, where you look like the, you know, every day, you know, is a, you act like somebody different, and you're panicked, and you know, you're trying to change a million things, or you, you don't want to be the other side of the spectrum where you're so stubborn that you can't adapt. So it goes back to me to being objective. And I think like everything, I think that's part of your job is to be, try to be as neutral as you can. We all have biases, it's human nature. You try to be as objective, it's the truth as you see it. What needs to get fixed? Where am I, where can I do better? That's where I start every day with me. And that's not me being a martyr, but that's the damn truth. So that's what you look at. And so that's what I'm trying to, to do here. But you come in there and you tell them the truth as, as you see it and the things you've got to clean up. And I think some of those are pretty obvious on Sunday, and uh, we'll go from there. And then we need to be better. We got a hell of a challenge Sunday. Josh, over the course of your career, how has your thinking changed about positions? I'm thinking about Kyle Pitts, who is a tight end but can play anywhere, or Cordero Patterson. Why can't he just be a running back? How, how have you evolved, do you, or do you think you have, in terms of flexibility with positions? Yeah, I think I've got, uh, you know, that's kind of how my mind works. You go back to some of the stuff we did in Tennessee. Uh, with with that position or with somebody like Patterson who can do a lot of different things, um, no different than some of the players we had in Tennessee and what, the, and what we tried to evolve. And again, it wasn't all roses. The end result, um, you know, ultimately we you know you don't win the Super Bowl, so you feel like you failed. But there was progress made there, and you know we got through some struggle there. But there was guys that did a lot of roles. You know, whether we played John who went running back, played tight end, split them out. I mean, that's kind of I don't think there's any secret. You know, we some of the things we do and the way we play. Um, so all those guys, I mean, those roles, they evolve as the season goes on. Um, you know, saw some good things, some things we got to do better, you know, a little bit personnel-wise. But I said, it's a long season. We'll see how it plays out after 17. Do you remember somebody you saw do that earlier in your career? And you, you saw a, some, a film, you saw a coach do something different with a guy and you thought that pushed you in this direction? Yeah. I, uh, I guess it goes back to a lot of different things. Um, it's kind of the way I look at the world through the eyes of, you know, looking at different businesses, looking at different sports teams, looking at other sports. Uh, it's just the way my mind works. Allison? When you have an older quarterback like Matt Ryan, a season vet, when does safety become a concern when you're seeing him get sacked four times? And is in those sacks, do you, do you see anything that he could do yeah. to prevent some of those sacks from happening? Well, certainly, certainly, you know, it was late in the game where he, you know, he, you know, he took a shot, I think, on the first drive, but that's playing quarterback. You know, it's not going to be perfect pocket every time. It was late when we got obvious, and they were able to pin their ears back. It certainly makes it hard. And there's a fine line. I mean, you're not, you're trying to accomplish something. Like, you're not trying to, like, if you're still a two possession game, yeah, it may have felt ugly as hell. But, you know, he's 22 to six, like, it's a two possession game. Um, so that's where, you know, you're, we're going to keep, continue to fight to try to win the football game. And then at some point, that's why I put Josh in at the end. So it's a fine line of not panicking, not, you know, you don't ever want to be the, the coach that throws a white flag and say, hey, here we go. But uh, yeah, there's times to be smart. And that's why I put Josh in at the end. Anthony, um, when you play on one of the greatest in Tom Brady, you talk, you talk about him, of course, being the champion and how he's being a good champion. Just as a coordinator and now as head coach, what are some things you found that helped help you be successful and at least slowing him down and ultimately, you know, basically slowing him down? What was the question? Just to, how how are we going to slow him down? Like, what have you found that as a coordinator and head coach on how to slow Brady down? Yeah, well, certainly uh, not many people have slowed him down. Um, but it, you know, it's a football game. It's it's a challenge every week. You know, we we, you know, you go into a Philadelphia game and it's everybody you play. You know, we didn't do anything to affect Jalen Hurts, and you saw what happened. So that's life every week. Uh, certain players, the good players, that's what you game plan for. It's what you, you, you the matchups, the stuff you look forward to. Um, you know, that's kind of a hard question to answer because you're sitting there. One, I'm not going to sit here saying, hey, here's our scheme this week. 
And two, it's kind of a loaded question because if you sat here, I'm not going to fall for the trap. But there'd be the, the guy. That, there's a lot. There's a graveyard of guys who, who've popped off about with arrogance about Tom Brady. Nobody's done it better than him. And we got all respect in the world. And there's a reason he's won seven Super Bowls. Like I alluded to earlier, if you make mistakes, he's going to make you pay. So we, we, you know, we got to we got to get better, and we got we got a hell of a challenge at four o'clock Sunday. One more deal. Yeah, coach. Um, Dallas kind of treated them like the 86 Bears throwing all those screens last week. Did you learn something from how they were attacked and were able to get the, the 400 and uh, four yards on them? Yeah, I mean, look, D-Led, there's a lot of different strategies. It's just coming back to scheme. Um, there's been people, you go back to everybody that's playing. I mean, that's what every coach does in the league. Why it works, does it fit them? Is So there's a, there's a lot of, that's what makes the game fun. But I'm going to ask you this one, too. Who won the game? So, again, you can feel good. You can throw for 500 yards to win the game. You can run for 300 yards. And if you lose the game, who cares? And it's the way they feel. Whether you pass, you win, you get three, you know, return, you know, an interception return, maybe a fumble recovery return. Um, you don't win the game, you know, who cares? That's kind of how I look at it. And that's not, that's not a shot at Dallas or anybody's strategy because there's a lot of smart coaches and they, they did a nice job moving the football. At the end of the day, end of the day, Tampa found a way to win. And we have our challenges, but I'm not going to sit here and say schematically, oh, we got to do exactly this. There's things that you know going in. They're a hell of a run defense. They've been that way for a couple of years. Um, so we got our challenges, and, and I'm not going to get up here and talk scheme. So um, stats don't really mean much to me if you don't have a lot of wins with them. All right. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.